Hello everyone, I'm Karen, otherwise known as Wellies and Waffles, and I show you how to grow out your own fruit and veg. Now, if you haven't been here before, if you'd like to subscribe and like and click the little bell, it'll notify you every time I pop a video on. So in this week's episode, it's, well, it's been a mammoth week. Most of it is going in next week's um, video, which is about the polytunnel transformation, because I've done so much work in there. I'm on the paracetamol for my back. I've done that much this week. <laughs> And getting the compost to the house is a task in itself so i'll show you all that but in this week's i'm going to be talking about the rest of the planting out so i'll show you all the rest of the planting out that i've done all the salad leaves and sunflowers potatoes there's all sorts going on in there um, and the irrigation system i've set up outside as well i've done that bit of a strawberry harvest mammoth strawberries i've not done anything with them i've just watered them I've not fed them or anything i've just watered them mammoth strawberries they're in the polytunnel the ones outside are just flowering at the moment but i've got lots to show you so again as usual so let's go and have a look So in the water but we have this filter and the sensors so it senses when your water is running low and lets you know about it and then that connects to this system here so this is the solar panel that connects to it and it's weather responsive so when it's warmer and sunnier and your plants need more water it will supply more water to your plants so it waters every three hours as well and if it's not watering it enough you can actually set it to your own settings so you can hook this up anywhere that's higher than your water but i've used a bit of my children's old bed <laughs> because i've nothing else to to stick it onto so it's going on there but it works so as you can see we get a nice trickle of water nice and gently and that I've gone along each plant and given it its own little feeder there, little waterer. And I've gone all the way along to do all of the courgettes because they are thirsty plants. So they'll get a nice water. And you can um, get some microporous hose as well, which waters all the way along it, which I'm going to be using in the polytunnel for the tomatoes and the squash. But this is perfect for the courgettes out here. This is Saladin, an iceberg lettuce, and I'm going to grow this in a shady area. Sometimes in full sun, lettuces can bolt, so if you've got a shady area that you can put them in, it's perfect. This is Freckles, I've grown it before, and it's always done really well, so the roots are looking good. So I'm going to plant this in the salad section that I shall show you around in a minute next to the Tom Thumb, which is a smaller lettuce. Right, let's have a look at this side of the plot. So we've got the sunflowers, which I'll show you in a bit, and the potatoes I've planted down up there. I've done a lot of pots though. The red strawberry popping corn. Mm -hmm and then a salad section. So we've got the dark rodent, then we've got little tom thumb lettuces, red tap soy, and lamb's lettuce. Then we've got a section of celeriac, then the leeks, and then as I spoke about earlier, the sisite, which is a radish leaf. Some of it looks like it's started to flower. Shall we do a bit of strawberry picking? Right, so look at them all, look at all these. smell is amazing.
I've had some whoppers this year. Look at them. Huge. And then you get the ones that are square. <laughs> All sorts of funky shapes. There they are. Don't they look good? I wish we had uh, smell a vision and you could smell these because they smell absolutely delicious. Nicely warmed in the polytunnel. And I'm gonna go and scoff these with my two boys. Yum. Let's get planting the sunflowers. So I've got some that I'm planting outside, some in pots and some in the polytunnel as well. Um, I've just thought it'd be a nice little area of sunflowers at the beginning of the pot. Great for the bees. So when you're planting out, just make sure that you stake them as well when they are the taller varieties. Currants are starting to look nice there. We've got red currants, black currants, white currants. I think we've got some pink currants as well, but it's looking really nice. Go in there, hopefully the birds won't spot them. Now I hear the gooseberries looking lovely. They didn't do anything last year, so it's good to see them this year, ready to make a gooseberry fool. So I've cleared a load of weeds from the front of this because, like I said before, the weeds just take over. But it is a good thing in, in some respects because the birds can't see the fruit. Um, but now they've been cleared a bit, they're fully on shore, so I'm hoping that they, you know, they leave us some. Sometimes they have um, devoured the lot. But it's look, yeah, cause it's quite open now, as you can see. Now I've cleared all that front bit. Um, a few have disappeared already, so the fruit, the current sections are all down there and then we've got the gooseberries on this side here. And then I'll just get on with this job of clearing the tulips because they're dying back now, snail. So that's it for this week. Thank you again for watching. Please come back again next week. I'm still, I can't speak properly with smiling at that polytunnel. All the tomatoes are in. The lots of varieties of squash have been planted. The melons, cucumbers. I still need to set up the water irrigation system in there. I've got a 25 meter microporous hose that's currently having a bubble bath. So that's getting ready to be set up. The irrigation system has been set up outside already. So that's already watering the plants. So yeah, lots going on. So please come and join me again. Thank you again for watching and I shall see you again soon. Take care, bye.